with assistance, of course. Okay. So uh, maybe now it is uh, uh, the time, two o'clock in uh, Paris time. Maybe uh, as a moderator, Mr. Kelkov, uh, our board <laughs> of the uh, of the uh, TFC World Council of Experts may kindly uh, invite our Madam World President uh, to address uh, to our uh, participants, please. <laughs> Uh, welcome, Mr. Kelkov. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, really glad to, to have the opportunity to see so many colleagues and uh, real estate professionals attending the, we the, the webinar here. It is the first uh, of the new season uh, from the start of the presidency of our distinguished guest uh, today, the pre uh, Madam President uh, Susan Greenfield. And without further ado, I would really like to give the floor to her because I think most of the audience is essentially anticipating the opening uh, speech of you. Uh, Susan, if I may call you that, please, the floor is yours. Yes, we all, thank you. All ears. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Welcome to everyone to the first uh, very important uh, webinar of our year. Um, you may not have heard very much from us this last month, but that doesn't mean that we haven't been busy. We've been busy planning the future. And I have not prepared um, remarks that I would normally prepare for this first um, welcome because I'm much better talking from my heart. And as my little grandchildren say, from my mind. Tell us a story from your mind, Grandma. They don't want to hear me read a book. Uh, pardon me? No, please go ahead. Uh, I, okay. So what I feel is most important is that we, we think about the future for our young professionals. And with that in mind, um, one of my very important objectives this year is to change uh, the way our world councils are set up, especially the World Council of Experts, because under the expert umbrella, we have so many different disciplines. But I believe that valuation and architecture are two very important disciplines that require their own World Council. And so in our strategic committee, which we have been very busy and active over the summer, um, I've requested that we study this and bring us a new plan for world councils. So in the future, you'll be hearing more about that, but I believe that this year under my presidency, we will have a world council of valuation that would be architects, valuers, uh, and uh, appraisers separately, okay? Um, that's been something that's been on my mind a long time, and I feel it's necessary to divide those disciplines. So I hope you agree with me because I think that this first platform is going to share your experience from around the world and really solidify my objective. Uh, you know that I feel FIOPSI is the most important uh, federation of its kind ever established in the world. We have so many different uh, disciplines under our umbrella, and we need to identify young professionals in every category to be able to expand FIOPSI and bring our expertise to many parts of the world. So I just wanted to say thank you so much, Dr. Supan, for starting us off with this wonderful platform and panel. And I look forward to hearing what you all have to say. So have, have a good panel. Thank you. Madam. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam President, it was uh, here. 
And Dr. Supon, please, uh, the yes. floor is yours. Uh, you are you're next in our agenda. Please, uh, yeah. go ahead. Uh, Madam President, may you, you can highly say something about our uh, uh, trade show uh, in New York in September. Maybe uh, some of us may uh, consider to join. Maybe you can oh. highly. Yes. I, Thank you. I'll be happy to do that. So it's normal that um, in recent years, the world president holds their first board meeting in this, their home city. Mine happens to be New York City. And so I will have my first board meeting officially here on the 15th. And with that in mind, we decided to open not the board meeting itself, but during that period of time, the 15th and the 16th, to plan a um, trade mission to give other members around the world an opportunity to come to meet the board under the circumstance of visiting different, um, different developments and different projects. And during that time, we will have a panel of, um, at the same time that this particular um, meeting will take place, will be the AFIRE meeting and there are many important investors and family offices that are going to be here in New York at that time. And so under the guidance of um, our past world president, Julian Josephs, who happens to be a very important part of our future this year, uh, he is creating a panel of experts who are investors and will be going to the um, the Museum of the City of New York to hear the panel, and then a small reception after. And the second day, we will be visiting uh, Hudson Yards. Hudson Yards is the newest and the most extraordinary um, mixed use development in Manhattan. So in the evening, we'll have a farewell dinner in Harlem at the Red Rooster. And so we're planning events around my board meeting because my board will be here and we're inviting our members if they would like to to join us and you can go to the app and find the registration everyone is welcome so uh, let's uh, meet in uh, uh, new york in september uh, on september uh, 14 to 18 something because our member well, you would need to arrive on the 14th yes. and um depart on the 17th if you because it's only two days oh, 15 see. and 16. thank you very much uh, everyone is welcome thank you so uh that is uh, our madam uh, president of the uh, world president of uh, cfc and our moderator uh, as you see in the screen uh, right now is uh, Mr. Ivan Wilkov. Uh, he is uh, the Vice President uh, of uh, VFC uh, Bulgaria. Uh, so this is, sorry, he is the Vice President of, our, uh, of the Council, yeah. And yes. President of VFC oh, Bulgaria. Yeah, for now, President please. Bulgaria. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. But I would like to return the favor, favor, Mr. President of the Council, and I would like to give you the floor and uh, to start with the agenda of our webinar. And please, with the results of the, of the survey that has been conducted. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, okay, so let me just try. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, now it will be my turn uh, to do some uh, some more presentation. Uh, so this is uh, on the screen. You can see that uh, uh, this is uh, our. Yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, okay. So uh, now I just uh, uh, present uh, what we found. Uh, the thing is. Uh, our World Council of uh, Experts, we uh, uh, have a questionnaires to our members. 
and also 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 uh, people related to variation uh, on the future of our uh, variation profession. Maybe we are afraid that in the future there may be uh, no future, or the future may be uh, bright or maybe blight. <laughs> so that's why we will. That's why we conducted this uh, research. And uh, last uh, June uh, the third, we have uh, another webinar on this, and we invited uh, uh, leading figures from different organizations like International Valuation Standard Committees and uh, um, Appraisal Institute and many other organizations to discuss this matter as well. And uh, this is our uh, presentation today that is uh, uh, now it, it will be mine for around 15 minutes and then the Professor Cooper's and then will be open for a panel discussion. Uh, so this will be uh, what will be today. So uh, during uh, my uh, survey, uh, we have around 150 uh, participants, uh, I mean 150 uh, uh, respondents uh, who are uh, discussing about uh, our uh, future of the profession. And these are from uh, many countries, from China, from uh, Vietnam, from Australia, and uh, Madame Eva uh, from Spain uh, may feel disappointed that there is no, no one from uh, Spain, maybe uh, some uh, miscommunication or something. That's why uh, there is no uh, people from Spain, maybe next time uh, we will have some more, but we have some in Nigeria <laughs> and many, maybe many others. So at least we have uh, 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 people from around 33 countries to try to uh, uh, help us think what is the uh, obstacle or the uh, disruption of our profession and what will be the uh, bright things and also the uh, opportunity for us, uh, for values in the future. So this is uh, the survey. And uh, the respondents are uh, mainly uh, values of uh, real estate and values of real estate and business and uh, real estate plans and machinery and values uh, of uh, business, uh, real estate business and plan and machinery. And also we have values of uh, business alone only and business and plantation and values of plantation only. Plantation and machinery only, many of them come from India. Uh, India is the maybe the capital of uh, values for plants and machinery and also uh, values from other uh, field as well. So this is uh, uh, what we found. And also uh, a lot of discussion from India as well today, many people from uh, India also joining us. And if any of us cannot, uh, cannot join, maybe you can go to the website of uh, 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 the Facebook of FIABC Thai, F-I-A-B-C-I and uh, thai, uh, 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 dot Thai uh, at, the, at, the, at the Facebook. Uh, now also broadcasting because we have around 400 <laughs> participants, but now only around 82 are in this uh, 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 broadcast. So this is the survey result. This result may be very small. Uh, don't worry, we have a, a large one. So this one is the uh, disruption, uh, something on technology and data and research uh, and the methodology uh, on uh, the uh, within the provision itself and something about the provision, provisional organization and outsiders. And also external factors, outsiders mean something like uh, author profession and external factors, something like in the case of um, uh, pandemics and war. Now there may be some threat, uh, some threat of war, but you can see that uh, the most uh, worried uh, thing is about the uh, technology. They may, many people may be worried that te uh, technology may uh, take an hour uh, role uh, in this case. Uh, I know one uh, uh, MAI that is the member of Appresso Institute. Uh, he is in Oregon, uh, in Salem, Oregon. Uh, 
uh, I also invited him to speak today, but today he uh, could not make it. Uh, he said that even if in the US we have a lot of good technology and also uh, a lot of uh, 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 computer assisted mass appraisals or something, but we still really need the values to explore because uh, some of the statistics uh, may not be true and we need some scrutiny uh, to try to value uh, properties uh, that may be something uh, on the positive side. But uh, on the negative side is that uh, uh, in the case of uh, uh, home uh, uh, or house for uh, loan purposes, maybe they have no need to do really scrutiny on that. So that may be another argument that we will discuss. So the most uh, worried sector is technology. And the second one uh, is something about uh, in the provision ourselves, uh, in everything, our provision ourselves. So uh, we will discuss this. So these are the major uh, things. So in details, in details, in the case of technology, what they said is that uh, uh, something about artificial intelligence, uh, maybe uh, less value will be needed. So this will be something uh, worried. And also automated valuation model, but automated valuation model or uh, computer assisted mass appraisal or uh, karma, uh, where uh, our International Association of Assessing, Assessing Officers said, uh, uh, this has been uh, in existence for over 30 years already but they also think this is uh, some uh, uh, threat to our uh, profession. And also ease of doing valuation, this also apply to the artificial intelligence and accuracy and misleading automation that may be something and software, different valuation profession that may be also related to automated valuation models and technology, the advancement of technology. So this is the thing about the uh, technology. Another thing related to technology uh, is something about the data and research. Say they may say something about uh, big data that actually also related to technology or uh, the abundance of data. So maybe no need for values. Uh, my friends in France said that uh, they can, uh, a buyer and a seller can quest for information from the public. So they have no need for values that may be something uh, involved or the digitalization of data collection. And another thing is the dearth of uh, reliable data. So uh, this is the uh, problem uh, for the case of data and research and also the dearth of uh, uh, research. So this is uh, something about data and research and also related to technology to some extent. And in the details, uh, say something about the uh, methodologies say the complexity of valuation uh, models. Uh, normally, valuers, they may not know how to do that. But uh, one of my professors and also my colleagues uh, who work together in Thailand, but he is an Australia, Australian, uh, Professor Cooper, who will be the next uh, uh, speaker to share. Uh, he has been doing a lot of uh, valuation models for uh, valuers. But normally, uh, uh, average uh, values may not know about this. Uh, by the way, I invite, according to the discussion uh, with uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Evan uh, last time, we said that we will uh, invite uh, a few uh, speakers like uh, Professor Cooper, but uh, uh, only Professor Cooper uh, can help us here. Uh, the rest, they uh, cannot make it today. So thank you very much for this. So this is something about methodology that is the complexity of valuation model and the intangible and ESG. ESG is uh, environmental, social, and governmental factors. That may be something that we have to uh, think something like uh, when we value, like we value a zoo, a zoo, we relocate a zoo from uh, in the, the hub of Bangkok to uh, the fringe of Bangkok. Uh, we have to uh, value these uh, properties. So we have to uh, value the financial uh, value and also the uh, economic uh, 
uh, value or the economic return on this as well. So the economic return may be a huge, uh, more huge amount of money compared to the financial return. So this is something that many people may not do that. Or the limitation of valuation method in uh, distress market, in the distress market, they may be difficult to value. So this is something about methodology. And in inside the profession, there is few new young values. I went to many uh, valuation uh, discussion or uh, symposium or uh, conference in the US like for the International Right of Way Association, International Association of Assessing Officers or Appraisal Initiative. I, I found that most of the participants are senior citizen, <laughs> maybe not as senior as me, but they are quite senior, maybe 50 up or something. Uh, uh, so uh, there, this is a, a set that is a few new young values entry and also continuous education program that is the lack of continuing education program and the lack of cooperation among values and course of ethics that is uh, breaching somehow and the fee reduction. So this is something that is uh, a problem. Uh, in Bangkok, we can have minimum fee and many of our firms may quote below minimum fee. Uh, in Australia, I heard that uh, they don't allow to have minimum fee, otherwise it will be the domination of the profession to the society. So it depends on uh, uh, quotation of uh, any, any guys or something. And also the uh, uh, unfair competition somehow, I don't know, and time uh, about a bunch dation. That is time limit. Like in uh, Bangkok, uh, and maybe in uh, Malaysia as well, that is uh, for our banks, they will request us to finish the valuation within three days. Some cases, uh, they said they need us to finish it within two days. So after we get the job today, uh, uh, that is today is Monday, uh, by uh, Thursday, we have to submit, Thursday morning, we have to submit, we have two days to work. So that may be really, uh, really quickly to do the job. So this is time, a bunch, bunch, dation. Maybe I have to spell properly, pronounce properly. And then in the provision, they said that uh, the recognition, the lack of recognition of professional, uh, our profession and lack of uh, government support and the fee for indemnity insurance. Many uh, country in many countries, we have to pay so high indemnity insurance uh, in Australia, also in Thailand. In uh, the case of uh, Thailand, uh, I pay, uh, we, in our firm, we pay around uh, 10,000 US dollar uh, in order to uh, cover around uh, 1 million US dollar. So this is uh, uh, valuers in our case. And we also have to uh, lack of professional control or professional uh, reliability, something. And also there are uncertified valuers working in the field. Uh, and this in, in this case, that may happen in some countries, but in most countries, it may not happen. And outsiders, that is the uh, influence of our clients, the other banks, also the competition across border, say our valuers from Thailand may go to value in India, uh, sorry, in Vietnam, in Myanmar. Uh, our valuers in Vietnam or in Myanmar may not have good participation or something, so this is the, the case. Or the invasion of author, related professional like uh, accountant or uh, something, uh, a financial analyst. So <clears throat> this is uh, uh, some worry. And also there are some bribery and conflict of interest that may happen in uh, from time to time. And also the influence of the clients. Oh, sorry, this is already the same. So this is uh, uh, outsiders. So these are something about this uh, disruption. Oh, I have only a few minutes left, so let me just go on. Uh, so this is uh, the details of all this uh, disruption. On the, on the contrary, uh, oh sorry, the last thing is about the external factors, that is economic crisis, the stagflation, the inflation, high inflation, or the uncertainty. Uh, there are so many uncertainty risks. Uh, normally we said we can assess, but uncertainty, we may not be able to assess. And the global political and economic uncertainty or international issues or natural disasters and pandemic and price fluctuation 
uh, during the pandemic or wars. Yeah, wars in uh, several, uh, several regions. So these are uh, the threat uh, uh, to our profession. Or the contrary, this is something about the uh, opportunities for our valuation profession as well. So I try to group uh, something similar to uh, some group to something similar to the uh, case of um, uh, the threat that is uh, something about technology uh, that also uh, very good to our uh, uh, profession, also data and research. So this is also uh, some uh, good thing also. The methodology, they said some good thing also. Or inside the profession, there also some good thing. And also the outsiders. So these are all uh, good things in details. Uh, that is, in the case of technology, they believe that some of them believe that because of the in artificial intelligence, AI, big data, uh, in this case, it may be a good thing so that we can find more comparable properties. Uh, so that it may be, on the other hand, our automated variation model that uh, uh, possibly uh, our professor uh, Cooper will uh, say something about this. Uh, uh, so happening in uh, Australia and many parts of the world. And also uh, digital transformation or uh, geographical information system for valuation. So this is also happening a lot in uh, this region and prop tech, uh, property technology or real estate techs, technology uh, that is more utilized uh, today and also uh, uh, internet of things or this other thing related to this or better technology. Uh, yeah, like in the past, we may have to run uh, uh, multiple regression analysis model ourselves, but now we have uh, suppliers who do this. So that may be something in the case of technology in the case of research, they said they are better research. Data analysis are more efficient and data analytic. Like uh, we, uh, if we know, want to know the uh, behavior of uh, our uh, uh, prospect customers, say uh, for shopping centers or something, uh, we uh, need some data analytic. And uh, we have more data bank for as a whole and data bank for machinery and data are more standardization and more standardized. So this is also something uh, important. And information exchange, there are more exchange of uh, information. Uh, like uh, when we value properties in Vietnam, we also have uh, exchange with our valuers in Vietnam or in Cambodia uh, so that uh, we work together. Because sometimes the security and exchange commission need the valuers from local uh, part of the world. Like uh, when we went, went to value property in Sri Lanka, uh, we also use the service of our uh, colleagues, uh, wearers from Sri Lanka, as well as our local, uh, as well as our uh, Thai wearers here. Yeah. And also, there are be better information. So these are uh, something about the uh, uh, data and research. In the case of technology, there are something about the uh, uh, business variation, uh, environmental, social, and uh, governmental related assessment. So these are the new field. Uh, today, I invite one man, uh, Mr. Elvin Fernandez. He is not here. Uh, he is a value and he was also the president of the International uh, Valuation Standard Committees, IVSC. He is my friend. Uh, he is an Oscar and Malaysian. But today he said he could not attend our class or speak because he went to Singapore uh, to study something about business valuation. Wow. He is also a lecturer himself, but he still study in very further details or something. So this means that uh, this will create more jobs or more uh, quality jobs for our valuers. But maybe uh, may, uh, some many valuers may not be able to go into that details. And also capacity building are uh, better and CPD, continuing professional development program are uh, better education better and expanding horizontal of practice that may be all of, all of these things may be the advantage for the privileged group of valuers but the less privileged group of valuers they may not be able to enjoy so this may be in different angle different view 
from different perspectives. Uh, also, they say something about the upskill valuers or webinar. Like we have a lot of webinars these days. Uh, yeah, that's why this is some sharing of experience and best practices. So, uh, yeah. like our uh, council of experts, we will try to do more and more webinar, uh, more regular, uh, so that we can uh, have uh, a good service. And as I hope, we hope that uh, in the future, our uh, uh, well, well words or appraiser or assessor can be our members of VFC so that we can build our VFC stronger. Last but not least, that is the inside the profession, they said uh, they also attract young talents, a cross border valuation fee better because for quality job, there may be higher fee uh, or higher income or more quality job, those are for the privileged uh, valuers. And also for the profession, they say something about the better control, uh, the government support, or greater uh, uh, global cooperation and harmonize, harmony, harmony among, uh, harmony among, among professional bodies and international standards are more uh, prevails. In the past, we have the Red Book. Now we have the IBSC and also we have Takeover from uh, Europe. And also for outsiders, uh, they said that some customer may be aware of our provision. Uh, maybe they can recognize us. And also the relationship between author provisions are maybe better and also better social uh, recognition. So these are the things that is uh, said by our uh, colleagues. Uh, but you can see here all of this. Uh, most important thing may be something about the data and the methodology and the provision. Uh, these three are more uh, important. Uh, uh, last uh, is this is the previous one that we organized in on June the third. Uh, you can still download and also see the video, so you can have a look uh, uh, here. And I just let you see uh, just two presentations. This is on the left. This is the president of the Appraisal Institute. They say something. Oh, they said that over the next decades. Also, technology will be able to write a report or contract or analyze leases or undertake valuation or trade assets. So this is some uh, thing that we have to keep in mind. And this is something that some keywords like uh, creativity, complexity, or curiosity, or empathy. So these are some view about the, this uh, technology uh, in valuation. And on the right, uh, this is the contribution from the International Valuation Standard Committee. Uh, uh, the president said that uh, about the embrace of technology. This is something I hope I understand that uh, Professor Cooper will say so. And also the enhance of client's experience, the ensure independence and objectivity. This is very important objectivity. Normally we have very subjective and uh, uh, reduction of time scale or update skill set. So these are uh, something about uh, uh, the presentation. Sorry, I take uh, three more minutes. At, uh, uh, so should we, I should uh, uh, stop right now. So uh, Mr. Kelkov, you may kindly. Uh, uh, yes, thank please. you. Thank you, Dr. Supon. Yes, you took a bit more of your time, but uh, with your passion, nobody can stop you when you start talking about uh, your profession yes. and your, <laughs> and plus we haven't seen you uh, in a in, in few weeks, so I guess uh, for the first meeting, you are allowed to go a bit over the limit. But I would really love to uh, to give the floor now for for Professor Kufo, which was mentioned several times on the on um, Dr. Supon's uh, uh, opening uh, statement and uh, entry to today's discussion. Please, uh, uh, Pro Professor Cooper, the floor is yours. We would like to hear your comments and thoughts about those uh, all those trends and issues that were. Uh, interesting uh, for us today as a professional community, as individual professionals. Okay, I hope you can hear me. Yes, we think you are okay. uh, clear. I'll just give you a little bit of background. I started working in the valuation field in 1954, which is a fair while ago. I spent about 20 years working in government valuation, mainly compulsory acquisition, but also assessing projects for government assistance and investment. And 
that covered New South Wales and South Australia. You're probably not too familiar with those areas. Um, I started my academic career in South Australia and spent 20 years in the development of a valuation program at the University of South Australia. And at an early stage in that process, I had doubts about whether or not the existing approach to valuation could ever be a, a very reliable process for everybody. The conclusion I've reached over the years is that valuation is an almost impossible profession. Um, but after the stint in, in Australia, I spent almost 10 years in Southeast Asia, first at a university in Malaysia, and secondly, in Thailand as a, an, a supposed expert in establishing more reliable valuation procedures to support the transfer system to assess properties for the purpose of charging taxes when properties were uh, transferred. And I spent about another 10 years running training programs, primarily in Indonesia and doing odd consulting things. After all of that, I haven't done a lot in the valuation profession, so you might think that I've uh, sort of got rusty. However, if we look at all the things that SOPON raised as problems confronting the profession and the things that have to be taken into account in establishing reliable valuation procedures, and you consider the components that would be necessary to deal with with reasonable accuracy in order to assess the value of a property. There are so many variables that are likely to vary amongst properties, amongst purchases, amongst vendors, and over time, that it is almost impossible for an individual valuer to take all those things into account and assess them accurately. And I think the alternative, which will be difficult to achieve, will be to embrace on a larger scale some formal methods of economic and spatial analysis and also time series analysis. And from a practical point of view, the only way that I think individual small firms in particular can achieve that is through some collaborative process of market analysis on a fairly large scale. Um, if we look at the development of what I might say is statistical methods in valuation, one finds a large amount of research work has been carried out in the United States. And there are a couple of reasons why that has happened. The principal reason, I think, is that the United States relies very heavily on property tax for the provision of a large number of services. And under the constitution, it's necessary that the property tax is fairly assessed and to be fairly assessed, it's necessary to have reliable valuation bases. So you have large property taxation organisations carrying out an, an extraordinary large amount of an extensive amount of research and modelling, which has influenced the rest of the profession to some extent. And there are numerous examples in the in the US. If you look at a typical uh, property economics or valuation um, organisation by their publications. For example, the Appraisal Institute produces a, um, I think it's a quarterly um, journal. Almost every issue will provide an illustration of statistical analysis, multivariate analysis, um, in order to achieve better quality and valuation. If you look at the American Real Estate Society's publications, and there are several of them, you'll find a preponderance of formal research of the real estate market, depending on 
some form of statistical analysis. Um, there's a real estate economics um, is another case. And there are another, other organizations like Pacific Rim Real Estate, real estate Society, which also in, seems to have encouraged this uh, reliance on statistical analysis, multivariate analysis, time series analysis, in order to solve fairly serious problems in valuation. I would say in relation to Australia, that little has changed over the years in terms of valua valuation practice and valuation education. And there's still heavy reliance on the standard approach um, valuation of investment properties main, based mainly on various interpretations of investment return and risk assessment and valuation of other properties by direct comparison, particularly res residential properties. And the extent to which those activities are uh, accurate depends very heavily on the extent of which valuers are able to specialize in the field so that their, their knowledge uh, is so extensive as to be a substitute for formal analysis. You know, I could recall valuers that operated in small regional cities in Australia who knew the market so well that they were able to very accurately estimate the value of a property uh, with a high degree of reliability. But in the case of um, people that operate on a broader scale, if you don't have that intimate local knowledge, you're not likely to be able to encapsulate all the aspects of the property that are necessary to be able to reach a reliable conclusion. Um, probably in Australia at present, more individuals rely on automated valuation models than property valuers, because that comes about as a result of particularly real estate marketing firms, real estate agents, offering potential customers the opportunity to provide some details of their property. And then those details are fed into a model. There are two major suppliers of, of that modeling in Australia. One is a, an organization called CoreLogic, and the other is another organization, Australian Property Monitors. And they use a variety of techniques, mainly um, statistical modeling techniques in order to produce a reasonably accurate estimate of the value. But each of those estimates is based probably on thousands of inputs. And that sort of exercise, I think, is beyond the ability beyond the capacity of a typical individual commercial valuer to achieve. They don't have the resources to be able to acquire all the data that's used. And they don't have the skills to apply the analysis that leads to the conclusion. Um, I was reading recently in one of the uh, Australian newspapers about a new service being provided the thing called real as, and that's been developed in conjunction with um, a university in Melbourne, Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology University, which has been for many years, the primary provider of valuation education in Victoria, the state of Victoria. And the um, article that I was reading that had expressed the view that this particular model produces extraordinarily accurate results. So the situation that, as I see it, is that unless it's open to individual valuation firms to operate in the, a similar way in a similar environment, 
that it's not likely in the long run that valuers will be able to outperform these automated valuation models. Um, I don't know whether anyone wants to ask any questions at this stage. Perhaps we can have some questions for you at the end of the uh, of the discussion. Right okay. now, I, I, don't, uh, yeah. I don't have it uh, in the chat session. Perhaps if there are, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. All right. Um, I think from, from, from again from my experience, um, most of the we'll start with this proposition. If you wanted to know where you were somewhere in the face of the earth, you need two particular bits of information, latitude and longitude. If you want to know a little bit more about that, perhaps you would like to know how, how far above sea level you were, you need three bits of information. So for one point, we need three items to reasonably accurately fix the location. If we wanted to know more about that point, there are many more other things that might be relevant. Things like soil type, um, temperature range, seasonal variation and so on. In the case of an individual property, if we think about all of the things that influence its value, it becomes a very, very large collection of, of data items, data points that are needed to be that need to be assessed accurately in order to determine the range of value that might be likely to apply to that particular property given those circumstances as we add more bits of information we can get in further and further into the business of minimizing the extent to which the value might range might, might uh, be established over a wide range. So that process is best served, in fact, by a technique called neural network analysis. And that process is one that very often gives rise to quite accurate value estimates. It's more likely to be uh, accurate than multiple regression analysis, for example. The problem with multiple regression analysis is that the basic form of the model that is a, a linear additive collection of, of weighted estimates in relation to features of properties is not a practical um, translation of the property, property market itself. It's not likely that each individual feature of a property offer, off, offers an estimate of a value contribution for that particular feature. And when it comes to model building, the complexity of the process, I think, is beyond the average value. So from a strictly practical point of view, the reasonably accurate statistical models that are employed by organizations that provide things like automated value models would not be available, would not be feasible for an individual value. So what I'm saying is the AVMs produce quite accurate estimates of value. Probably overall, they're more reliable than the estimates of value produced by valuers. Valuers would not be would not be able to produce AVMs in their own right. So the alternative for a valuer to compete with AVMs is to, to be able to source the expertise and the data through some sort of collective process. And I think this is the dilemma that faces most valuers that eventually they'll be forced out of the, out of the market by further development of AVMs. And that's been the, the trend in Australia over about the last 10 or 15 years that automated valuation models are used more extensively, they've become more accurate. And 
And I'd like to mention also the, the role of the Australian Reserve Bank. It's the organisation that's responsible for monitoring economic activity in Australia. And its main output is to set interest rates. And it's reasonably, recently been involved in a rather contentious um, business as a result of stating at one stage that there shouldn't be any increase in interest rates for the next two years. This was about six months ago. And then two months ago, we started increasing interest rates. The, um, the bank does have a model of housing prices. And if you Google the Reserve Bank and modeling prices, modeling house values, um, you would be able to find a PDF file which provides a description of how the bank goes about that. Um, it also uses multivariate analysis, very models that uh, incorporate time series analysis and various forms of regression analysis. And I think it's a, a worthwhile article to have a look at to get some idea of what is actually behind the process of modeling. Um, so I don't know whether or not I'm being overly contentious, but I'm, I do always, I have always felt a little bit pessimistic about the way the valuation profession continues to rely very heavily on a subjective analysis of data, the analysis of which is an almost impossible process. And that's the way I see it. Uh, thank you, Professor Cooper. Yes, you, uh, at a certain point, you sound a bit pessimistic, but I guess this is pretty much uh, the general mood uh, nowadays when uh, a lot of professions, a lot of professionals are having the same dilemma. It's not related only to our particular line of service or line of business. I guess this is uh, something that the new age of technologies had brought to us to constantly evaluate and decide uh, whether technology interferes too much into our daily life and our business and whether that creates a threat or an opportunity. I believe the answers to the survey that was conducted was also quite uh, interesting in showing the different opinions on that. And uh, I think uh, now is probably the time to ask you to stay with us a bit more and join us for the panel discussion that we are going to, uh, uh, to, to have in a minute with all those uh, issues that you and Dr. Supon and our president raised in the beginning of our webinar. And I would really like to use this op that opportunity to ask uh, the attendees to ask questions in the chat session that might be addressed directly to both you uh, Dr. Supon and any of the participants in the discussion if nobody has anything against it. With that said, I would uh, really ask to, uh, to have my colleagues from the World Council of Experts to uh, unmute themselves and join in for the uh, uh, next uh, uh, part of our, uh, of our webinar. Uh, Dr. Supon, please, uh, if you if you may, uh, yes. Ms. Gonzalez Nebrera and Ivan Bennett, please. Uh, so, uh, with all those uh, uh, insights given from our distinguished speakers, uh, how do you feel? Do you feel pessimistic about the last uh, uh, sentence uh, Professor Cooper just uh, said? whether technology is really a threat or an opportunity judging from the results of the survey i see really mix uh, a mix uh, of uh, opinions over there perhaps uh, uh, dr supon would like to uh, to start and, and uh, jump in with, uh, with with your personal uh, yes. thoughts on that thank you sir uh, i think i should uh, uh, leave this opportunity to uh, mr ivan bennett uh, who are still here as well. He is uh, our uh, secretary of this uh, council and very knowledgeable uh, in this thing. So maybe uh, uh, Mr. Ivan Bennett, uh, any contribution, sir? 
Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Sopan. Yeah, I'll try and sound knowledgeable, <laughs> but no <laughs> guarantees. Uh, I actually retired from the appraisal business about 10 years ago, so I don't have day-to-day uh, -day, uh, knowledge of everything that's currently happening. But just based on you know that, that past chapter in my career and what I've been able to, to uh, just gain reading white papers and articles mm -hmm. in various trade journals and whatnot, and of course, based on the, the results of your survey, uh, Dr. Sopan, it does seem like a lot of appraisers are very fearful of technology. And my take is that it really seems to be much more of an issue in the residential uh, appraisal field. Not as much of a threat, at least currently, in the, the commercial side of appraisal. And I, you know, in reflecting on that, it, it seems to me that maybe, be, and I previously, I was a commercial real estate appraiser. So I'm speaking from that perspective. It seems like uh, people in that field have a little bit more protection from uh, technology. Uh, you know, very much uh, when you're appraising commercial real estate, it's, and I guess this does apply to residential as well, but it's very much a combination of art and science. You, you, you can't blindly rely on technology. Uh, you know, you really have to have professional judgment and you have to be able to distinguish between the good data and the bad data. But, you know, allow me to be a futurist for just a moment. I think that maybe in time, you know, automated valuation models might come, might even come more into play in appraising commercial real estate properties as uh, currently, you know, they've made tremendous inroads into residential. And it occurs to me that maybe, you know, going forward with the advent of blockchain and things of that nature, uh, that we might, there might be some time in the not too distant future where commercial real estate becomes fractionalized and you can actually buy a small piece of a commercial of commercial real estate. For example, you could buy a small piece of the, the Empire State Building. Uh, you would be a liquid uh, asset. Uh, you know, you wouldn't be tied down. At, you know, currently, if you purchase a property of that magnitude, you know, I, I guess I, just to put it simply, you're stuck with it. I mean, you can't easily trade in and out of it. But, uh, you know, if, if blockchain does allow for fractionalization of properties of that nature, then you could buy a small piece of it. You could easily trade in and out of it. And that opens up a whole new area, I think. I mean, currently, commercial real estate is very localized. You know, you, you, I, you know I personally, I invest in commercial real estate, but I focus on the Pacific Northwest. Imagine if I had the opportunity to expand you know, th those investment opportunities worldwide. And I'm thinking that perhaps at some point when commercial real estate, if it does become fractionalized, that will be an opportunity that's available to all of us. And at that time, big data really starts to make a lot of sense for commercial real estate because you're not limited to one local market where there aren't that many properties of that specific type. So I, I guess long story short, I think that technology poses more of a threat to the, the vocation of people who are currently working in residential as residential real estate appraisers. But in another 10 or 20 years, uh, it very well could be uh, just as much of a threat or you know, the flip side of the coin, an opportunity, I suppose, for commercial real estate. But uh, you'll certainly you know, like to hear what some of the other panelists think about those issues or any other topics. Thank you, Dr. Sopan. Yes. Uh I'm, I'm just curious, why do you leave uh, a personal <laughs> business? Uh, maybe you can... Uh, you're, you're, you're putting me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> being an appraiser is hard work. Oh. And also high fee for activity. Uh, you know, as a commercial real estate appraiser in the United States, when you appraise a property, not only do you have to come up with an opinion of value, you have, you have to justify it by writing a report that typically is somewhere between 100 and 125 pages. That's a lot of work. So nowadays as an investor, I still have to come up with an opinion of value before I attempt to purchase a property. 
but I can now do it on the back of a napkin. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> from that regard, uh, it, it's not as difficult. I don't have to write those lengthy reports. So I, I having done, having been a, an appraiser for many years, I certainly have a lot of respect for people in that field. It is very hard work, but you know, very rewarding, but it's, it's certainly hard work. You know, so earning more money to be an investor. <laughs> I see. Okay, uh, if you, if I may ask uh, our uh, um, uh, uh, distinguished colleague uh, Eva, Eva Gonzalez, never. Uh, mm -hmm. Can I ask you uh, uh, about the, your thoughts on the same issue about the invasion in brackets of the technology in our profession? And uh, I would like to add another layer of the thoughts both me and you being uh, members of uh, European Union citizens uh, uh, countries, uh, do you think there, were, there might also be a, a possibility or, or, or another obstacle if they uh, come up with a regulation uh, that should be uh, applied uh, in, in certain future about the standards of the uh, valuation in all European Union countries, regardless of the, their different market uh, uh, development and uh, amount of available information. And all of us should start worrying and, uh, and start collecting data in advance, mm -hmm. uh, whether that might be uh, something to, to, to expect in the future. What's your, your, your saying on that? <laughs> First of all, uh, I'm always afraid that for, for, the, for the last times, I feel like my grandma and I'm not so old, you know, but uh, the, the time is uh, changed so quickly that uh, you have to be always uh, studying what uh, are the new, the new rules. More in my country in Spain that they, they write the rules more, more quick that, I, that, I, that I, can, I can read it, you know, and that the thing changes uh, very, very rapid. But uh, uh, the answer of your question is it's not, it's not easy, but I think that Tegova and some, some uh, organisms like, like this can do a lot, of, a lot for our profession because this is a, this is a profession. Uh, being an appraiser is a profession. And I understand, I understand the Dr. Ivan Bennett. Hello from, from here. Um, I understand you uh, very well because one thing is to put the number, but the other thing is to uh, argument argument on your in your work. Why are you saying that this is a two thousand euros or twenty thousand euros? And this this will be will travel in front of a judge or in front of an invest investor who is uh, uh, trusting you. So the responsible is very very high. And we have to be uh, conscious about that. No, not everybody can do uh, appraisals because the responsibility could uh, be very high. The other thing that uh, we are, have to be worried about, but in, uh, in the positive point of view, is that the more specialized we are, uh, the more necessary uh, our service will be. Okay, so uh, the clients will uh, always uh, need us, um, not in, in the normal field, uh, buying and selling, uh, but in some, for, for example, for mediation or uh, resolution of uh, conflict. Why not to put an appraiser in a mediation uh, um, process, of, process, okay? And in every uh, investment, private or public, it's needed an appraiser in some, some way or in another way. So uh, we have to be uh, worried about how it's going to change our profession, but uh, we have to be aware of it and uh, be, be prepared. So we have to be worried, but okay. <laughs> uh, cry and and then <laughs> and then I wake up and and continue. Thank you, thank you, Eva. Uh, and I have a question for all the panelists, including Professor Cooper as well. How do you see uh, the, the the lack of uh, transparency in certain areas market 
uh, and the struggle of, uh, for example, somebody who is assigned to perform an, uh, an appraisal or evaluation in a market that he doesn't have uh, sufficient uh, amount of uh, uh, reliable information to conduct the, uh, the assignment, whether there they should be uh, some uh, professional independent associations like ours to be in place to provide certain um, basic information that should be readily available for professional services. Would that be uh, an option to keep uh, uh, pace with the artificial intelligence that will be uh, pretty much uh, uh, in competition with the individuals in the, in the market? Anyone who who, who like to take the, the question, I... Doctor Supon, or anyone? Yes. Uh, in my case, I think uh, uh, there may be no other contribution uh, at this moment, sir. Uh, maybe uh, anyone who would like to say any uh, contribute anything may raise your hand uh, so that. Uh, uh, our moderator, Mr. Ivan, will come and uh, uh, let you uh, contribute to our uh, platform here, please. So perhaps Dr. Xopan or Ivan, could I just follow up on Eva's comment yes. about how yes, crazy should become? Go ahead and, play, and later I'll, I'll ask um, Mr. Cooper to... to, to, to to say uh, thank you I just very briefly just on Eva's comment yeah. about being more consultative and I really think that's that's key I mean going forward it's not enough for appraisers to be able to provide you know an opinion of value they have to explain well even if they're using uh, automated you know automated valuation models they have to be able to confirm that it's accurate but in addition to that, you know, they have to be able to provide their clients with, uh, you know, information about how they should be, I mean, especially if it's commercial real estate, how should they be operating the property going forward? How could they increase their value? You know, are their operating expenses too high? Is the rent, you know, is the rent uh, that they're achieving less than market rent? But put more of a focus on being an, a, con a consultant for your client as opposed to only an appraiser. But I just thought that was a very good point from Eva. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Professor Cooper, you, you, you wanted to add something. If you can unmute yourself, please. Uh, yes, we can't hear now. Okay, sorry for that. I'm trying to we send a message. Hear. Yes, he's he's muted. Professor Cooper, can you unmute your microphone, please, sir? No, perhaps he. he... Hello. Can you say it louder? <laughs> Yes, uh, Professor Cooper, your microphone. Your microphone, sir. Can't hear him. Okay. Is, we, he, we, we, we is, he, is he muted by the organizer? Uh, I, I, I can't see uh, any restrictions to for him. Perhaps he's uh, he has to. Can Sopon release the voice? Dr. Sopon, are you here with us? Let me check. Yeah, one moment. Uh, so that uh, Professor Cooper can get, get in. Oh. Oh, he's still muted. Okay, yeah. Ah, All right. Yeah. That's better. Sorry, yes, absolutely. Okay. Personally, I think it's very dangerous for any valuer to take on a job in an area where he lacks any reasonable level of familiarity um, because it's highly unlikely that he would be able to 
interpret the market accurately in those circumstances. And I, I might mention that the, the most recent AVM system that is being released in Australia at present incorporates crowdsourcing as part of the process of determining the value of a property by exposing the details of the property to a, a large panel of, of uh, people who've been operating in the market in that area. So it's a, it's a funny collective hybrid approach in, incorporated in a, a basically statistically or, or oriented model. model. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you're quite right. I can, I, I can almost agree. Uh, anyone else uh, want to uh, to join for the uh, on the same subject? Uh, uh, for what, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Wilcox, uh, why we are waiting? Uh, just allow me to contribute only a bit. Uh, one thing is that in the case of uh, residential properties uh, uh, for bank loan or something uh, in uh, many countries, something like in Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, and many other countries. I think uh, this will be taken over by uh, uh, our uh, big data. Say in Thailand, we are the largest estate information center. So we know the property prices. Uh, uh, since the beginning of each project and what are the developments, the changes every year or something. So in this case, uh, we can uh, uh, do the variation, like bulk variation or mass variation for or desktop variation for our uh, bank uh, more really accurately. And anything that may be different from their expectation, say 15% uh, uh, different from their expectation, maybe we have to go to the field. But that is just only some uh, uh, 10 to 15 percent uh, of the population uh, of the cases that we have to go to the field. So in this case, uh, for uh, 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 simple valuation, uh, housing loan or something, uh, this may be no more. But in the case of a commercial property, like Mr. Bennett said, uh, in this case, we still use financial model or something. Uh, uh, the uh, a mass appraisal may not be able to do that pop more properly. So in this case, we still use our own uh, uh, expertise to do that. And uh, in the case of uh, when we do the business valuation or uh, in the case of uh, when we do the uh, economic uh, analysis or something in that case, uh, yeah, this is an opportunity to do complex uh, valuation or a valuation of a dam or something. So. Uh, in this case, uh, we have to uh, uplift our skills so that we can do uh, more uh, in a uh, more horizontal, more variety of jobs to do. So uh, our valuers, we need to uh, adjust ourselves to some extent. Otherwise, uh, uh, our job will be uh, no more. So that is just some, some more contribution. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, uh, those uh, uh, remarks that you just made are also quite visible in the survey that you presented. Uh, a lot of uh, 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 percentages were uh, reflecting the opportunities in, in the profession and in, the, uh, in our business uh, that was related to need of or opportunity for more education and more exchange of business practices. And I would like to, uh, to ask the, 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 the the panelists to actually add a uh, few comments on, on the importance of uh, professional bodies, entities like FIAPSI or uh, any uh, other international institution that are busy in the sector to uh, promote and support the um, invita inv invitation to the, to the profession of the new uh, students and new talents and new colleagues that would have to raise the bar or at least keep it at the level that we currently are with the uh, uh, new uh, challenges of the uh, that lying ahead of us mm, we are approaching the end of the webinar and i would uh, like to use that uh, uh, opportunity for you to uh, say a few final words and conclusion of the 
today's meeting. Eva? It's a lot, a lot to say in, in so, um, so uh, short time. But thanks a lot for, uh, to Dr. Sopon for the many, many information that, that he uh, is able to, to capt. And let's see in the uh, next, next time. Thanks for all. Uh, Professor Cooper? I don't think I've got much more to add, but I, I, I think in relation to uh, the Australian education system in, in respect of uh, courses for values, there is a need to deal a little bit more with the, the solutions that are available to sort of minimise the difficulties that the complexity of the data present. Um, I don't think there's been enough emphasis on providing an understanding of the techniques that are used within AVMs, for example. And if you could see the way that the AVM works, it would shed a little bit more light on the, on the way the value should think about the valuation process. Because I, I think that the AVMs very successfully incorporate a large number of slightly different approaches leading to the, the, the estimate of the, the value of the property in, involved. But this particularly applies to residential valuation and probably overall residential valuation is the most common, but probably not the, not the most rewarding. Um, I think there's, a, there's another issue that applies in, in other countries, not so much in Australia, and that is the quality of the basic market data in Australia, the, the prices of properties are captured at the title registration level because we have a government-run uh, property certification system. And so whenever any property is transferred, the details are captured from the transfer process and they're available commercially from the, from the government organisations that collect them so that everybody gets fairly reliable data in relation to market transactions. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Bennett, a few words from you. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, well, first and foremost, I just want to thank our FIOPSI World President, uh, Susan Greenfield, for joining today. And uh, of course, thank you, Dr. Sofan, for the research. And for the people in the audience, this is something that you know, Dr. Sofan has been doing for a long time, uh, conducting surveys. Uh, I believe it was last year or maybe the year before, uh, Dr. Sofan, you conducted a survey on the, the impact of uh, COVID-19 on the real estate uh, industry. And then uh, now with this survey, you know, particularly uh, getting opinions about appraisal, uh, it's very, very uh, insightful, very useful. And it's just one of the, the benefits of being a member of FIOPSI is just being able to not only attend these webinars, but to interact with anybody who's on this panel today, any of the members of the World Council of Experts. So if anyone is interested, I would very much encourage you to go to the, the FIOPSI website, which is fiopsi.org and just get more information. See if it's something that might be a good fit for you if you want to interact with real estate professionals at a global level. Certainly, uh, FIOPSI is an organization